Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. This is another Katrina Ag puzzle. It says, what's the area of the circle? I think it's safe to assume that this circle is inscribed in this triangle. If you want to try this one on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. Each of these sides of the triangle are touching the circle in one point. They're called tangent lines. And here are some notes for tangent lines. If two tangent lines intersect, the distance from the intersection to the points of tangency are the exact same. In these notes, they're both shown as equal to x. And if you draw a radius to that point of tangency, the tangent line and the radius are always at right angles. And next, if we look at the center of the circle, that is called the in-center. And then for the in-center of a circle, if you draw segments from that in-center to the vertices of the triangle, those segments are the angle bisectors. They will cut each of these three angles in half. So let's start by looking at these tangent line notes. If we connect the radius from here to the point of tangency, we can call it R for radius. And this length right here actually corresponds with the X in our notes, so let's call that X. And from the notes, we know that this R and this X will meet at right angles. And for now, we're done with these notes. And then let's look at the in-center notes. If we draw a segment from the in-center to this vertex, we know it's going to cut this angle in half. And we can call each of these angles theta because we know they're both equal to each other. Now to finish, we're going to end up using all of these trigonometry notes. And I'll explain each one when we get there. For the law of cosines, any triangle will have this property. If you have a side length, lowercase a, and the angle opposite of it, capital A, and the same thing for b and c, this formula will always be true. So in this triangle, if we call this side a and this angle capital A, and then these two sides b and c, we can now use this formula. Lowercase a is equal to 15. Lowercase b is equal to 13, so we can change both of these b's into 13. And then lowercase c is 14, so we can change both of these c's into 14. And then the angle A is this entire angle up here, so it's going to be 2 theta. And now let's clean things up. 15 squared is 225, 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196. And then we're going to subtract 2 times 13 times 14, which is 364 times cosine 2 theta. And then 169 plus 196 is equal to 365. We can subtract 365 from both sides. On the left-hand side, 225 minus 365 is equal to negative 140. And on the right-hand side, these 365s will cancel each other out. And then we can smoosh everything together. Next, let's divide both sides by negative 364. Negative 140 over negative 364 is equal to 5 thirteenths. And then these negative 364s cancel each other out. So now we have cosine of 2 theta is equal to 5 thirteenths. It's tricky to work with this double angle, so we're going to use the double angle formula to get rid of the double angle. It tells us that cosine of 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. It's pretty cool to see how these notes are derived, we just don't have time to do it right now. And then from here we can add 1 to both sides. On the right hand side, the negative 1 and the positive 1 will cancel each other out. And on the left hand side, this 1 can be rewritten as 13 thirteenths. And 13 thirteenths plus 5 thirteenths is 18 thirteenths. Next, we can get rid of this 2. We can multiply both sides by 1 half. On the left hand side, this 1 half is going to change the 18 into a 9. And on the right hand side, the 1 half and the 2 will cancel each other out. So we have the cosine squared theta is equal to 9 thirteenths. Next, we can use the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. This one's also pretty cool to derive. I think I've made two videos on this. We know that cosine squared theta is equal to 9 thirteenths, so let's substitute that in. And we can bring down everything else. Next, we can subtract 9 thirteenths from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, the positive 9 thirteenths and negative 9 thirteenths will cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, we can make this 1 a 13 over thirteenths. And 13 thirteenths minus 9 thirteenths is equal to 4 thirteenths. So now we have cosine squared theta and sine squared theta. Let's square root both sides of both equations. On the left-hand side, the square root of cosine squared theta is just cosine theta. And on the right-hand side, the square root of 9 thirteenths ends up being the square root of 9 over square root of 13. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And then for this equation on the left-hand side, this is sine theta. And the square root of 4 thirteenths splits up into square root of 4 over square root of 13. And the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So now we have cosine theta and sine theta, and there's one more fun thing we can do. On the left-hand side, I want to divide this sine theta by cosine theta, which means on the right-hand side, we'll have to divide this by this. And on the left-hand side, let's rewrite this as sine theta over cosine theta. And then on the right-hand side, we're dividing fractions. A neat way to divide fractions is to change the divide to a multiply and flip the second fraction. Now we can cross-cancel. This square root of 13 and this square root of 13 will cancel each other out. And so we're left with two-thirds. And now we can use our notes for tangent of theta. So these notes are telling us we can change sine theta over cosine theta into tangent of theta. But these notes are also telling us the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. 
So now we're ready to go back to our original triangle. First, we need to find the opposite of this angle theta. Well, the opposite of this theta is equal to r. So we can change the opposite into an r. And then the adjacent to this angle is the x, so we can change adjacent to x. So we now know the tangent of theta is equal to 2 thirds, but it's also equal to r over x. So we can set r over x equal to 2 thirds. And this looks important, so let's put a box around it. And now we can bring back our notes for the tangent lines. Since these are both tangent lines that meet at a point, we know this piece is also equal to x. Now let's look at this side of the triangle. If the whole side is equal to 13 and this piece is equal to x, that means this piece will equal 13 minus x. Now looking again at our tangent notes, this distance will also be equal to this distance. So we can call this 13 minus x. And now looking at the bottom of our triangle, the whole thing is equal to 15. This piece is equal to 13 minus x which means this piece would be 15 minus 13 minus x. And then looking at the right-hand side, the whole thing is 14. This piece is x, so this piece will be 14 minus x. And now we can look at this distance and this distance. We know these two lengths are equal to each other. And once again, that's because of these notes right here. So we can set these two equations equal to each other. On the right-hand side, this negative will distribute to both the 13 and the negative x, making it negative 13 plus x. And then 15 minus 13 is equal to 2. Next, we can add x to both sides and subtract 2 from both sides. On the left-hand side, these two x's will cancel each other out, and 14 minus 2 is 12. And on the right-hand side, these two 2's will cancel each other out, and x plus x is equal to 2x. After we divide both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 6. And now let's go back to this important thing. In the place of this x, let's plug in 6. And now we're ready to solve for r. This is a proportion so we can cross multiply. r times 3 gives us 3r, and that's going to be equal to 2 times 6, which is 12. We can divide both sides by 3, and we get r is equal to 4. That means that our radius of this circle is equal to 4. Well, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So the area of our green circle would be equal to pi 4 squared. 4 squared is equal to 16, and so we have an area of 16 pi. Let's give it a label of square units and put a box around it. This is the answer to our question. The area of the green circle is 16 pi square units. How exciting.